In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a web form and get user data into a queue campaign so that Templator can kick off a render in After Effects. It's really cool. You can essentially create video from a web form. So what we're going to do is use Typeform and Zapier, and we're going to join them together. Typeform is a product that allows you to easily create web forms in a point and click manner. Zapier is a service that allows you to connect apps together. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead and make this Typeform browser full screen and log in. Let's click on login. So earlier I had already created a web form inside of my Typeform account and I've called it name cards. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and go to create just to show you how it's made. And we have an intro slate. We have our first question, which asks for the user's name. The second question, which asks for the user's birth date, and then an area for the user to upload a picture of themselves. Finally, I have the exit outro slate for the web form. Once this is done, I can go ahead and go to preview, and I'm gonna go ahead and just click desktop here. And this is how the form will look when we share it with any user. So, you know, they enter their name, and then here's what's your birth date, and then here is an opportunity for them to upload an image file. So we're gonna go ahead and go back, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna skip over integrate because we're gonna use Zapier to do that. We're not gonna actually do the integration within Typeform. Now we're gonna go to share here. One thing you're gonna wanna take note of is this part of the share URL. This is an identifier that will come up when you do the integration with Zapier. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is bring this type form into Zapier so we can begin to route the data into Q. Let's get this browser out of the way. And here we are at Zapier. We're gonna go ahead and log in as Dataclay Dev. That's the account that we have at Zapier. This will take us to create what they call a new zap. So if I hover over this plus sign, I can click on make a zap. The first thing we want to do is name the zap. So we're gonna call this name cards into Q campaign. Next, what we want to do is set up a trigger. A trigger is an event that starts the data flow. It starts the zap flow. So in the search apps, we're going to type in Typeform, and there it is. So let's go ahead and click Typeform. What we're going to do is select the trigger event from the Typeform app. So click on the drop down, and we just want to trigger an event when a new submission gets entered into the form. So click on new entry and click on continue. So what we wanna do is make sure that Zapier knows about our Typeform account. So click here and you can see I had already connected my Typeform account with Zapier. You can see here demo at dataclay.com is the account that I want. So I'm gonna click this one and now I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. Next thing we do is we have to choose the form from our Typeform account. We know that our form is called name cards and we also know this identifier here. So if we click on this drop down menu, you can see it's pulled in the name cards form. And I know for a fact that it's that form because of this identifier here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this and then click continue. So our trigger should be set up. Just click on test trigger to ensure that Zapier is communicating to Typeform A-OK. -okay. And it looks like, yes, they have found an entry in the web form that we created and it inserted some lorem ipsum delore content. And that effectively concludes setting up the trigger. So now we're gonna go ahead and hit continue. And what we're gonna do now is set up a Zapier action. And an action is an event that the zap performs after the trigger fires off. So the first thing that we wanna do is make sure that the image file that gets uploaded via the web form gets put into Amazon S3 in a bucket that we've already created. We're going to connect S3 to this zap. So let's go ahead and click on this guy. And for the action event, we're gonna go ahead and click on this dropdown and say, upload a file. So we're gonna say copy an already existing file or attachment from the trigger service, which effectively is Typeform. So let's click that, all right. Now we're gonna click continue and we're gonna choose our S3 account. I've already set it up. All you have to do is set it up inside of Zapier. You can click on this connect a new account, but I've already set it up just so that we don't have to worry about sharing any secret keys or anything on this screencast. So let's go ahead and click this 
So we've set up the S3 account and click continue. Here's the meat of this configuration where we set up this particular action. The first choice I need to make is which bucket I want these uploads to land into. In the bucket name dropdown, I'm gonna go ahead and select this Typeform uploads bucket that I'd already created. Now we need to figure out a unique name for each upload that gets saved to this bucket. And that's what this key field is. You can literally type anything you want here, but we definitely want it to be dynamic. So we're gonna to choose to use the submission token, which gets generated every time a user enters data into the web form. Let's go ahead and click this. So now let's decide which field from the type form will be used as the binary data for the file asset. Okay, so we click here and click on show all options. And here we can see this file content of the share a picture of yourself. So there's the file URL, which we don't want. And we can see that that URL is hosted at Typeform, but Templator won't be able to actually access this. And that's why we have to move the asset to S3. Templator can certainly read from S3 buckets without any issue. So let's say file content, share a picture of yourself, and that will be what is used to actually upload as the binary information for the file in the bucket. For the MIME type, we're just gonna change it from none to auto. And we get that from the suggestion in the call out below this field here. It says use auto for us to guess, none for no value, or something like plain text if you wanna be explicit. So let's go ahead and hit continue. All right, what we're gonna do is test this action. So let's see if this binary data gets inserted into the Typeform uploads bucket with this file name. And before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up an application that allows me to browse my S3 buckets. Here we go. This is Transmit for Mac OS by Panic Software. I've connected to my S3 bucket. You can see here is Typeform uploads and there's nothing inside. So we're gonna click on this test and continue and then hit refresh here to see if any file got added. So let's click this and it says, a upload file was sent to Amazon 3 just now. Let's go back into our client here and click reload and there we go, 128 kilobytes. And here is that ID that we used from the test entry in the type form. Our next step is to create another action in the zap. We are going to get all of the data from both the type form and the URL reference to the file upload in S3 into our Q campaign. So let's go ahead and open up a new tab and go to q.dataplay.com. We're already logged in and land right onto our campaigns page. So we're gonna create a new campaign specific for this zap. We're gonna call this guy name cards. And for the default template, we're gonna use the existing template that we have in our account and the MacBook Pro that I've been using as the default satellite. So I'm gonna go ahead and click submit. And now we have a new campaign right here. We're gonna open up the Twirly for this campaign, and then we're gonna take note of this campaign ID, copy it into memory, because we're gonna to need to use it in our zap. Now that we know the campaign ID, let's go ahead and create our next action in our zap. We're gonna go ahead and click this plus button right here. So what we have to do is find something called a hook. Let's go ahead and take a look here, and we see web hooks by Zapier. So let's choose an action event, and we wanna fire off a single post request as a form or JSON. So we're gonna do that and click continue. All right, what we're gonna do is enter a URL that the zap will hit after the upload in S3 is complete and after the data is in the type form. So let's click here. And now the question is, where do we want the zap to go to? This is where the Q API documentation comes into play. Let's take a look. So let's go ahead and create another tab here and we're gonna to go to q-apidocs.dataclay.com. Go to the jobs collection here and we wanna understand the documentation for creating a new job. You can see it is a post request and this is the URL that we're gonna need. The only required parameter inside of the body of this post request is this project ID. The term project ID really is a misnomer. It should be campaign ID, but this is kind of a legacy from when we were building the Q API. What we need here is the campaign ID that we copied from 
our Q dashboard. So this guy right here, this ID right here is used as the value for this project ID in the body. So what we're gonna do is enter in this URL into this field right here. For the body in the data area, we're gonna go ahead and type in project ID here. It's case sensitive, it has to match this value right here. And for the data, we are going to enter in the campaign ID that we want this zap data to drop into. So we go back into here, copy this, and then we're gonna paste it right here. What this is saying is after all of this business right here that the Zap does, it's going to call this URL and it's gonna send this project ID value to this URL right here. In addition to the project ID, we also have to send in data that comes from the other parts of the form. So recall that in our form here, we have three questions. We have the name, the birth date, and then the picture. So what we're gonna do is click on this plus button right here for the data and choose this to say name. And we are going to select new entry and type form and we're gonna show all the options and then choose the value from hello, what's your name question. So that one would be right here. Now we're gonna click on add again. And here what we're gonna enter in is birth date. And recall that these keys here should match the layer names in your After Effects template that you are targeting in this campaign. The birth date, we're gonna go to new entry and type form and then select what is your birth date right here. Then go to add and we are going to do photo here. The value of the photo key is going to be a URL to the Amazon S3 upload. So we are going to go back to our transmit app and here, luckily I can just do copy URL and then paste this in just to get the format of the reference. So here I'm gonna leave this HTTPS type form uploads S3, Amazon AWS.com, and I'm going to delete this here. And I'm going to just go back to the entry and use my ID that I've used in the Amazon S3 upload. So you can see here the setup action is using the ID submission token to name the file down here in the post action when I'm sending everything, I am going to also use the ID. So this part of the reference for the photo value will stay constant and then Zapier will choose the ID from the type form to do that. So what we're gonna do now is authorize Zapier to write into the campaign. Let's go ahead and bring up the Q campaign again and let's scroll down here and we'll notice that we have this headers area here we are going to type in authentication. And if we look at the API, you can see that the authorization is the name of the header, and then we have to use this term bearer, and then we have to enter in our organization API key, and I'll show you how to get that. So we type in not authentication, but authorization. Type in the word bearer here. Now we're gonna to go to our Q dashboard and go to our account and grab this API token, click copy, and then paste right there. This is how Zapier gains access to our account on Q. We have to have an API key and we have to actually follow the guidelines from the documentation to name the header authorization and use this bearer term space and then our key right there. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and hit continue. And what Zapier lets us do is it lets us create like a test entry. So I'm gonna to go to the campaigns here in the Q dashboard and click on view. And what we'll do is test and continue. And we should see this data here land into a job in the name cards campaign. So I'm gonna click test and continue. And it says test was successful, great. So if I go here and hit reload, we should see one job that came in from the Zapier. And there it is. Let's go ahead and go to the edit and we can see here that we've got that data that Zapier just entered in. And there's the photo reference, and there's the AEP coming in from the default template, and there's the ID for the job, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's go ahead and see what happens when we actually use the type form. I'm gonna, going to turn this on, and the zap is now on. What we're gonna do now is go to the type form, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring this guy over to the right. And what we're gonna do is go to the share and we're gonna copy this link and create a new tab and then go here. Now we are at the type form that we created 
which is hooked up to the Zap that we just configured. So all the user data that gets submitted into this form eventually makes its way into the name cards campaign right inside of Q. We're gonna submit a sample entry into the type form and we should see the job appear inside of this campaign in our Q dashboard. Let's take a look. I'll click start right here. And what I'm gonna do is use Nikola Tesla as some sample information, click okay. And he was born on July 10th, 1856. And now on my local drive, I've got an image of Nikola right here. So I'm gonna drag it and pop it in right there. And now I'm gonna click submit. So if I go back to my Q dashboard and hit reload, we should see more than one row. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this right here. And if we just hit the edit button, we can see that some of that data got in there. There's the birth date, the July 10th birth date. There's Nicola's name. And then we have this reference to this photo that is on S3, which is fantastic. Now there is a couple issues here. One is that there is no output name which is a problem for if we want Templator to name the file, and there's no file extension on the photo reference. And so for the way that Templator works, if you're gonna do a remote footage asset, you have to have the correct file extension on the reference. So we're gonna go back into this app and we're gonna figure out how to get a custom output name and we're gonna figure out how to add that file extension depending on the file type that the user uploads. Okay, let's take a look. So I'm gonna bring up Zapier, which we've got in a different browser window. And the first thing that we wanna do is we want to go back to the upload file in Amazon S3 and see how we set it up. So we click on the setup action and we can see that here's the key. The key is the file name that ends up in our bucket and it's just using the ID and that's why we're not getting the extension. So what we're gonna do is hit period here and that will be a constant. So the file name in the bucket will be the ID from the submission period and then we need to get that extension from the upload that the user submits in the type form. To do that, what Zapier allows you to do is use something called a format and we can change how incoming data is formatted from the type form and use that format in other parts of the zap. So click on format and we're gonna choose the event. We're gonna use text, hit continue. And now what we wanna do is transform via a split. So we're gonna do split text. And for the values here, we're gonna choose the file URL from the type form upload. We are going to split on the period character. And that means that our file URL is made up of, you know, a series of characters. And we are going to segment that series based off of the period character. So what we wanna do is we wanna grab the last segment based on that split. So we're gonna choose last here. So let's go ahead and click continue. And we're just gonna do test and review. And this is gonna give us this output where it says com slash images and then a funny hash. The reason this is doing that is because on the sample data and type form, it actually doesn't have a file with an extension. And so that's why we're getting everything after the .com. When you actually go into the type form and you upload a file with .jpg or .png for that particular field, it should just extract the extension, okay? The next thing we wanna do is recall that the output value here in our job is blank. And we wanna have those be meaningful file names when Templator renders them to disk. So we're gonna click on the plus sign here, go to format once more, and we are going to choose text again and click continue. And what we wanna do is basically do a replace. So let's go ahead and do replace. For the input value, we want to use something from the type form entry. We're gonna show all the options and we wanna grab the person's name. So we're gonna click that right there. And so what we're gonna do is replace any spaces with a dash so that there's no spacing in the file name. We are going to type in bracket colon space colon bracket. You can see here on this note, it says to find a space, use this right here. And so that's what we entered in there. So what we wanna do is we want to replace a space with just a hyphen. So we type in that character there. Let's go ahead and hit continue. And now we're gonna do test and review. And there we go. So anything with a space is now going to be substituted with a hyphen. Now we can use these formatted text tokens in any other part of the zap. So let's close. And now if we go back into the upload file in Amazon S3 and we go to the setup action, after our period here, 
what we want to do is use the text from two. And so choose that right there. Okay. Now the Amazon S3 bucket is going to have the ID period and then the extension from the file that gets uploaded. The other thing that we want to do is on our post, we want to add a output key in the body of the request to queue. So we're going to hit plus here. We're going to enter an output for this body parameter. And then for the output value here, we're going to choose the text here. And to ensure that it's a unique file name, we're going to also click that right there. And then we're going to say underscore, and then we're going to do the ID submission token. So we'll see the person's name underscore, and then the actual ID submission. One final detail that we have to take care of is in the value of the photo body parameter, we also have to have the file extension for the S3 upload. So click in period, and then we are going to grab the formatted text from the second step in our zap, which is this one right here. Okay, I think this basically wraps up the configuration of the zap, and now I'm gonna go ahead and click on. Now we can go back into the type form and enter in some more data and see how that ends up in Q. So let's take a look. We're gonna go back into here and let's click start. And what we're gonna do is choose Greta Garbo, hit enter, and she was born on September 18th, 1905. Click okay. And then we have a image of Greta right here on our local disk. Let's take a look at the file name. It's greta-garbo.jpg. And so we should see this .jpg end up in the asset on S3 and in the reference in Q. So let's click on submit. Let's go back into Q. Let's get out of here. And we're gonna go ahead and reload this. And we should see a new row pop in with the Greta Garbo entry. Okay, so if we go to edit, we can see here that we've got the output right here that has the user's name or the entry's name with the dash. And then we also have the full reference to AWS. Now that we've got the data set up correctly, let's see how this works in Templator. Before I bring up After Effects, I'm gonna copy this job ID so that I can filter for it inside of Templator to get this data right into the composition. So I've copied that and I'm gonna go into AE and link Templator to the name cards campaign that we've been working on. So I'm gonna click link campaign. So inside of the job selection setup, I'm gonna go ahead and check the ID field here and paste in that ID and then click on the open Q inspector button. And now I should see the Greta Garbo data from Q and there it is. Great, so let's click okay and click save. And now what I'm gonna do is in my transport, I'm gonna click to the beginning, which should just retrieve that one job. And there is all of the data with the image that we uploaded from the form. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to go into queue and delete all the jobs there, and then just put After Effects right next to this form. And then we're gonna enable the bot and we should see After Effects respond to form submissions. All right, so let's go ahead and go back into queue. And what we're gonna do is just delete these items here. So I'm just going to select these three and then hit delete. And yes, I'm sure. So now name cards has no more jobs, but that's okay. We have this trusty form here and that will allow us to insert more jobs. So we're gonna go back into AE here and we are going to enable bot. While there's no jobs in there, that should be okay. So we're gonna hit enable. And now what's happening is After Effects is waiting for new jobs to enter into that name cards campaign. So let's click on start here. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in Charlie Chaplin. And Charlie's birthday was April 16th, 1889. And now let's just drag in Charlie's photo from our local disc, which is going to be this guy right here. Click that. And now hit submit. Okay, great. Now we've entered in some information from a form and we should see Templator react to that and create an output. Let's take a look. So it found it. There's the Charlie Chaplin. And now there is Charlie right from the web form. Excellent. So bot is on. It is waiting for new jobs to enter into that name cards campaign. I'm gonna go ahead and click another just so we can see that magic again. Click start here and choose August 
Lumiere, and his birthday was October 19th, 1869. And now we have a image of Auguste right here. Uh, let's see where he is, there he is. Click that, drag him there, hit submit, and let's just watch After Effects do its thing again. Yep, and it found the entry in that campaign, and there is Auguste. Maybe I misspelled his first name. Regardless, what I wanna show you is why it's ultimately really cool, because Typeform is a whole service that allows you to create these web forms, but I can do it on my desktop or I can do it on my mobile phone. So what I wanna show you is how you can enter in something from a mobile device and get After Effects to respond to that. What I've done is I have brought up the Typeform onto my iPhone. I've pointed Chrome to the URL and I'm just gonna go ahead and start here. So I'm gonna click Start and my full name is Ari Stav Chansky. Click OK. And I'm not gonna give away my birth date, but I will use the Unix Epoch date, which is January 1st, 1970. Okay, that's how geeky I am. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and I'm going to choose a file, but what's really cool is I can just take a photo right from my phone. So I'm gonna do take a photo or a video, and there's my After Effects monitor right there, but I'm going to flip around the camera and take a photo of myself. And I'm gonna use that photo. That's getting uploaded, and I'm going to hit Submit, and now what we should see is After Effects respond to that submission once it lands into that Q campaign. And there we go. Okay, all right everybody, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for sitting through this really technical demo. The sky truly is the limit with Q. You can really integrate your own apps really seamlessly and looking forward to hearing all about your feedback and what you do with it. All right, take care, bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to click around to learn more and subscribe to our channel so you can learn the latest techniques for automating your video production process. I'm Ari Stefchansky, signing off. Thanks again.